Good evening, and after this programme was criticised on points of view this week for claiming that the Queen Mother had died in 1979, we'd like to apologise. Of course, she's very much alive, unless you're watching the repeat and she pegged it over the weekend. <laughs> In the news this week, there's evidence that the late Alan Clark may have been reincarnated. <laughs> On who wants to be a millionaire, and Mr. Bob Fanshaw is asked what's the capital of Jordan and decides to phone a friend. <laughs> and after three years in hospital, India's number one stuntman waves goodbye to his doctors and nurses. On Ian Hislop's team is a candidate for London Mayor who was said to be flattered when John Prescott announced that he was throwing his weight behind her. Flattened might have been more accurate. <laughs> Glenda Jackson. <laughs> and with Paul Merton tonight is a member of the House of Lords who recently gave audiences on Radio 3 an extended guide to rap, ambient house, jungle and thrash metal, which was the last time he was asked to fill in during Test Match Special. <laughs> The Earl of Onslow. <laughs> Round one is where it all begins, to fall apart. Paul and your lordship, your <laughs> pedigree chums. Oh yes, this is uh, clearly the uh, House of Lords. Is that, uh, that who's that's, that, Lord Irving? Wakeham. Oh, Wakeham. That's well, Lord Beardy, isn't it? That's, yes. <laughs> mm. So what was he protesting about? Uh, he was protesting about the abol abolition of us. Mm. So what are your chances, do you think? You've got 24 hours, haven't you? Uh, I don't know is the answer. Mm, but it, we will know by the time this goes out. You will so. know by the time this goes out. Yeah. So look away now. <laughs> <laughs> there was a picture of a Lord Onslow in the Daily Telegraph this week. We can have a look at it now. That's uh, not you on a good day, is it? No, um, it's my cousin, Cranley Onslow, of Woking. <laughs> so is he Lord Onslow or Lord Woking? He's Lord Onslow of Woking. Right. And uh, you're Lord Onslow of? Onslow. <laughs> So, in a, in a game of poker, does that beat a Lord um, <laughs> <laughs> Onslow of Woking? You've always been in favour of uh, reform of the Lords. I've always been in favour of reform. You wrote to Margaret Thatcher and said, do it before the Labour Party do it, because they'll do it sillily. That's exactly right. Do you think you've done it sillily, Linda? Absolutely not. We've done it. That's the important thing, isn't it? You're going to fill it full of Tony's mates, though, aren't you? Well, I think... Um... <laughs> Uh, this is the ousting of uh, 659 hereditary peers from the House of Lords. The Royal Commission's report will be one of the first to be published in extra-large print, as many of the Lords complain that they suffer from short-sightedness. So, on behalf of us all, we'd just like to say, best wishes on your retirement. <laughs> Ian and Glenda. Huh? Oh, it's, it's Portillo at Enfield a couple of years ago. Um, this is Kensington and Chelsea deciding who will be their next prospective candidate. There he is, he's back. And isn't um, Peter Tatchell going to stand? He made it. What is it that Tatchell's particularly annoyed about? I know Tatchell's got a problem. He thinks everyone sort of hates homosexuals, and they don't. They just hate Peter Tatchell. <laughs> Well, I think he, he regarded Portillo as having been hypocritical because he didn't vote for lowering the age of consent. And in fact, you're with uh, Portillo on that, aren't you? Yeah. Mm. I rather feel it doesn't matter what small boys do behind the fives courts, but you don't actually want the gym master to join in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm warming to these hereditary things. <laughs> It is um, Michael Portillo's return to national politics after securing the Tory nomination for the Kensington and Chelsea by-election. Amid accusations of a stitch-up, 19 prospective candidates were rigorously scrutinised by the selection committee, but the other 18 failed to give the correct answer to the final question, are you Michael Portillo? <laughs> uh, Paul and Lord Onslow. This will be a hunting question. Uh, is it about Prince William? Prince William going hunting at the weekend. Oh, who's that man with his hand over his face? Prince Charles picking his nose. Oh, yes. And that's it. 
What? They went hunting? They went hunting the weekend and people said, oh, you shouldn't go, you shouldn't go hunting. <laughs> <laughs> You're a member of the hunt, aren't you? I hunt, yes. Mm. Which hunt are you a member of? I, I hunt the fernie. And that was originally part of the corn hunt, was it? How did you know that? Uh, researchers told me. I thought so. <laughs> yes. That's a meat substitute, isn't mm. it? <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. What has struck me is that at the turn of the century, um, the Church of England was pro foxing, hun fox hunting, and anti buggery, and it's now pro buggery and anti fox hunting. <laughs> but um, presumably, with buggery, you don't have to chase your quarry through the countryside. <laughs> you asked Peter Catchell. <laughs> I don't know. They move pretty quick on Hampstead Heath, don't they? <laughs> How do How you know? Yeah, I was just about to ask that for herself. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Only when you're there. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, it is lot. Pretend you're an undercover policeman. Mm. <laughs> Quickly, mm. swallow the evidence. Mm. So. <laughs> but who is it that uh, your leader has blamed for blocking the anti hunt bill? Well, it was undoubtedly the Conservatives. Blair actually blamed the Lords. In fact, he said on the Frost Show, this is his quote, uh, the legislation was obstructed in the House of Lords. But as far as I'm aware, it never got as far as Never got near the House of Lords. But they would have obstructed it. That and it's the same thing. <laughs> and it's exactly the same thing. Mm. Well, so a theoretical uh, possibility is the same as a well, fact. Well, it's a theoretical is it? chamber, isn't it? Mm. I mean, come on. You can't seriously expect people who, by accident of birth, have a right in deciding what effect you As opposed to an accident of giving Tony a huge sum of money and then becoming lords. <laughs> That's too subtle for me. That's too subtle for me. You have to explain that. It's Prince Charles' uh, controversial decision to uh, take his two sons hunting. Celebrities that have been involved in fox hunting in the past include Harry Enfield, Ian Botham, and even Anne Robinson, but only because she's small and ginger and happened to be walking across a field. <laughs> And finally, Ian and Glenda. Oh, ginger people. <laughs> One of them was, anyway. Someone who makes records. That's someone who plays records. Who are those people? Well, one of them was Chris Evans. And the other was a Spice Girl. And I don't know who all the other ones were. Um, Excellent. Um... <laughs> <laughs> don't laugh. <laughs> I thought that's what they were supposed to do when they came here. <laughs> Everything. No, it was Jerry Halliwell. Yes. And she's Ginger Spice, isn't she? Or was, yes. Yes. There was a uh, uh, Baby Spice. They oh, both right. got a record out. Yeah. Oh, of course they have. Yes, they have. Are you aware of, of Baby Spice, of Emma Bunton? You're obviously not a fan, but you're aware of... Uh, no, I'm not. I must be of, honest. Of her existence, no, right. I didn't. It I might didn't. be worth you becoming aware because she is a constituent of yours. It, in that case... <laughs> Don't worry. Before, before I leave this building, right. <laughs> I'll have nailed that one down. <laughs> when, uh, during during the, uh, the last general election, when all the would-be candidates in Hampstead and Highgate uh, were female, we were dubbed to be the Spice Girls, and I was told that I was Old Spice. Better than being Waste of Spice. <laughs> weren't standing. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Lord Onslow, Spice Girl's a bit tame for you. I, I think they're totally delicious. <laughs> God! <laughs> but you, of course, are uh, quite a well-known DJ. And we've got a clip of you on Radio 3, and we can hear it now. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's time to get tripping the funkiest show you will ever know. BBC Radio 3. Me, Lord Onslow, with another edition of Supertune. The show with the sounds of the street. <laughs> oh, I know. You've never heard that, have you? Um, it is the uh, so-called Spice Wars. Uh, Jerry is now being linked in the press with Chris Evans, although his uh, friends point out if a gorgeous woman is seen in a bar snogging Chris, then everyone assumes she's romantically attached. Uh, safer to assume she's drunk. <laughs> So, 
so uh, at the end of the uh, first round, it doesn't take a genius to tell you that the scores are four each, but I'll tell you anyway, the scores are four each. Mm. For round two this week, we turn to London, reminiscent of Dick Whittington, and to the candidates for mayor, reminiscent of Dick Turpin, uh, for it's uh, time to unveil our superannuated digital laser-enhanced scandalometer. <laughs> Why am I not on there? Are you a candidate? Yes. <laughs> I'm totally sorry, we had no idea. <laughs> Ken Livingston, uh, Frank Dobson, Geoffrey Archer and Susan Kramer, the only four serious contenders for the mayoral election. <laughs> When the music stops on the candidate's head, it's our panel's solemn duty to identify the scandal associated with them. Uh, so, Ian, let's see who's on the spike. <laughs> oh. uh, well, Ian has uh, landed on Geoffrey Archer, so perhaps a clue is called for to narrow it down a bit. <laughs> Suit? Is this the shoplifting suits incident in Montreal, in Canada? Can I? It might be. <gasps> when Je Jeffrey found himself outside a department store with a number of suits which he'd forgotten to pay for. <laughs> it happens all the time. Couple mm. of suits over your shoulder, out the door. Oh, I'm paid for them. <laughs> and uh, what's the new evidence that has come out recently? Mm, that he did it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Although, Ian, we should uh, clarify this, he was actually suspected of shoplifting, he wasn't actually charged. Uh, in fact, uh, that he blamed his confusion on something. He said that at the time, it wasn't sure that when you left the store, there was like a sort of concourse or an underpass, and he didn't know that that was the end of the shop. And, and it was... going to the garage? Yeah, he said he got as far as, he got as, far as Luton before he realised <laughs> it. was very confusing, I had no idea I'd actually left the shop, that was his defence. Uh, yes. Uh, his initial response, actually, uh, was to claim that he was never involved in any incident of any sort mm -hmm. uh, like this. Uh, but then he changed that. Oh, suits! Yeah. <laughs> oh, Canada! <laughs> oh, me! <laughs> uh, but his confusion then centred around an, in, an interconnecting bridge between two stores, uh, which... Well, between Selfridges and Harrods, as well. Uh, it was in Toronto, actually. It was Simpsons. Oh, Toronto, actually. not Montreal. Oh. Toronto, yeah. I was confused. Um, <laughs> but uh, do you know what came out about this interconnecting bridge that he claimed? It was, it's not there. Uh, it wasn't there when he actually walked off with the suits. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It was built subsequent to that. During the latest revelations about Archer, fellow novelist Frederick Forsyth leapt to his defence, saying, perhaps London needs a workaholic dynamo to kick ass where it needs to be kicked. Not sure Geoffrey's legs are flexible enough. <laughs> um, your Lordship, the, the funky O. Um, <laughs> So, I think a clue, all too necessary right, once okay. again. <laughs> Anglia his, shares. His wife was, was Madame la Directrice. And, um, totally director. surprisingly, he bought some just before an enormous takeover bid was made and sold them on behalf of a friend just after the takeover bid was made public. And you suggesting that's a bit fishy? <laughs> <laughs> and why did he claim he bought the shares? What was it that... To help a friend, if I remember rightly. But there was someone who pushed him in, in that direction. He claimed. Um, uh, the editor of Express. Editor of... Nicholas Lloyd, yes. yes. And what was strange about that? Uh, they didn't have the conversation... Until and... after it had happened. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Jeffrey Archer had been round to Nicholas Lloyd's house and had taken a couple of coats and was wandering down the drive. <laughs> <laughs> Look, what do you mean? I thought this was still your house. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he, he has changed that story now, though. He's, uh, apparently, he now bought the shares after reading the business section of the Daily Mail, which is even more implausible in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> 
This is uh, this week's from. announcement uh, that the government is launching a fresh investigation into Mr. Archer's uh, share dealings in Anglia Television. Uh, the man who stands to benefit most is the defeated Tory candidate Stephen Norris, who was accused of saying of his rival, I will never ever support Archer alive or dead. Uh, when asked about the outburst on BBC Radio, he had this to say. I don't recognise them. It's not words I've ever used about anybody in any circumstances. However, this does seem to be somewhat at odds with his views as expressed here. As I will never, ever um, support Archer, mm. alive or dead. <laughs> okay, Glenda? Uh, <laughs> di disappointment from the crowd. <laughs> uh, because no. they know there's absolutely nothing shameful um, about Frank Dobson. Mm. Not going to get any points. <laughs> <laughs> what about the duplicate letters? What duplicate? Duplicate letters. Um, Has he got a hold of, of the addresses of all the Labour voters in the uh, Greater London area? Mm. And um, that was the first scandal, and then wrote to them. And then all these MPs. Um, Blairite MPs have written identical letters to their constituents saying, I'm a great friend of Frank's. He is marvellous. I would like you to vote for him. This is a personal recommendation, nothing to do with central office telling me to do this. Hmm. Lots of people have got two from different MPs. Surely not. It's true, Glenda. It's I a tough, nasty world. This. <laughs> have you not read about the 68,000 names and addresses which uh, he's got from the Labour Party's mailing list? Yes, I have indeed read that, yeah. and I understand that uh, there is going to be an inquiry into how these lists were obtained. You know what he suggested for the reason why he got them was? Because he got them from sympathetic MPs. Yes, I, I, I read that also. And a lot of the names and addresses come from constituents in your constituency. Yes, and, and um, <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm very fond of Frank, but nobody <laughs> asked me if right. I could furnish such lists, and indeed it would not be within my power so to do. What if that it was a friendly PM them? who gave him the list? <laughs> no, the PM's too busy. He doesn't have time to do things like that. Oh, yes, he does. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, he doesn't. He doesn't. Don't be absurd. He's um, running the country. Who is Frank? Uh... <laughs> I thought that I'm was sorry. Alistair Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I think about the whole mayor Please don't London. say you'd vote for me. It would L kill my chance of stone dead. Yeah. Lon London, the the vote, London <laughs> mayor. Anything that is so enthusiastically <laughs> backed by both Ken Livingstone and Geoffrey Archer seems to me might have a flaw in it. <laughs> and uh, finally in this round, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, once again, astonishingly, the Scandalometer has picked Geoffrey Archer, but this time in a sporting context, as we show a clip from Grandstand in 1964 and ask, what happened next? They've switched, I think, Mitkoff's on the outside and Archer on the... Yes, Archer caused the break and it's Mitkoff on the outside. They've switched their position. Is this now a, a, an obscure Olympic sport running like a big girl's blouse? They don't do, <laughs> they don't do it anymore, do they? <laughs> what happened next? Geoffrey Archer, again, sort of like he, he full start, he's weighed, he's got a couple of suits with him. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he's thrown out, he's thrown out. Right, OK, uh, let's have a look. So it's Cook, Archer, Atkins, Metcalf, and this time they're... Oh, another false one, and who's caused it? Now, this is very interesting. It looks like Archer, but I'm not sure that Cook wasn't there too. What do you think, Peter? Well, certainly Archer ran before the gun there. The recall <laughs> was justified. He's been responsible for two, and on the rules, that merits um, disqualification. So there we are, that strange feeling of deja vu. Two false starts leading to automatic disqualification, but for an extra point, Paul... What happened next? <laughs> <laughs> and they said, all right, okay, you, you can run again then. He said, you won't, you won't full start. He says, listen, I'm Geoffrey Archer. My word is my share bond. I will not <laughs> make another full start. And they said, well, let me let you go if you promise not to make it. He said, I promise I won't do another full start. And he did it again. He did a full start. <laughs> okay, roll VT. Cook, Archer, Atkinson, Metcalf. And this time it's all right. And Cook's quickly into his stride. Metcalf now beginning to come through. Cook's in the early lead easily. Now Archer coming through to challenge him. And Metcalf too is going to be on the team very quick. Cook coming through, and Archer, and Metcalf on the team, Metcalf on the team from Archer and Cook, I think Archer had a clean... Catch him, that's the bloke who's got our suits. <laughs> <laughs> Mayoral candidate Geoffrey Archer, they're coming a fully deserved second in that race, uh, so he knows how it feels already. <laughs>
Geoffrey Archer is immensely entertaining. I think he should be Lord Mayor of somewhere. <laughs> Not London, because I mean, a bit, you know, Paris or something. But I mean, <laughs> we... <laughs> so, are you going to join his campaign? Yes. Okay. <laughs> what we should do is play a trick on him, right? Mm. When, <laughs> when we've had the election, tell him he's won. <laughs> and the next day, sort of say, you know, go through London for an open top bus, and then the next day, everybody hides. <laughs> There's loads of trees in Hyde Park, I'd behind them. And shout out Tosspot. He looks around, there's nobody there. <laughs> That's what he should do. <laughs> Which uh, running battle uh, leaves, well, uh, Paul and Lord Onslow uh, in pole position, leading as they are 9-7. And so to round three, which in response to popular demand has been specially reduced to two questions, one per team, Paul and my lord, Leonardo DiCaprio, David Hasselhoff, Tony Blair and the Beach Boys. Well, um, I think that um, this is about beaches. Tuscany. Yes, what about Tuscany? There's a beach there. Yeah. <laughs> which, which was closed off for our supreme governor. David Hasselhoff, this film Baywatch, and there was an incident, I think, where Australia somewhere, where sort of like loads of members of the public had to go away. You can't come on the beach. Leonardo DiCaprio, he was in a film recently where um, the beach didn't look beachy enough. So they put in loads of palm trees and tore up loads of stuff, and unfortunately, they tore up all these plants that was holding the beach together. And when they went, the tide came the in tide and tide took tide the beach away. <laughs> <laughs> and the Beach Boys haven't really got anything to do with beaches apart from that's their names. So they're the odd one out. Is the right answer. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know that? Yes, so the answer is that they have all inspired beach protests except for the Beach Boys. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio was paid $20 million for his latest film, The Beach. Uh, not that he let the money go to his head. Just because you're in a hotel, you don't have to pay $5 for a Diet Coke. Just go down the road for a $3 six-pack, he patiently explained to his butler. <laughs> Ian and Glenda, your damsels in address are the Duchess of York, Margaret Thatcher, Mo Molum and Glenda Jackson. <laughs> it looks as though I'm doing some kind of advert for fire retardant curtains, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I've no idea what it is. Um, is it, um, has hmm. the Queen got anything to do with it? I'll tell you, someone who has got something to do with the answer. Go on. You. Oh. Uh, this, is this a school question? How do you mean? <laughs> Well, it can't be a head boy question, because they're all females, um, and I certainly wasn't a head girl. Margaret Thatcher probably was. Um, is that... are we getting warm? You are getting quite warm, yes. Fine. So, um... All the others were head girls, apart from you. Yes, you're absolutely right. The answer is that they were all head girls, except for... for yourself. Me. How yeah. marvellous. Well Ian was a head girl at school. You were a head girl yes, at Arling yes. Line, weren't you? Where? I wasn't head girl, no. <laughs> so what's the name of the school? <laughs> uh, the name of the school was Arling Line College. <laughs> Guess what, Mummy? I'm head boy. <laughs> well, as opposed to guess what, Mum? I've got GCSE metalwork. Right. <laughs> CSE <laughs> ungraded. <laughs> so, which school did you go to then? What's it to you? <laughs> well, you're asking Ian about his school. Why don't we go ask you about yours? Caterham School. Caterham? Mm. Mm. <laughs> Okay, head cook. Here, here's the big one, Paul. <laughs> Ask Lord Onslow which school he went to. <laughs> Lord, I'll wish to. I'll wish to. Toot in Beck Grammar. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> You've done well for yourself. Yes, can you remember your motto? Who are you looking at? I'm sorry. <laughs> that must have been a tough school. <laughs> <laughs> On the banner outside the school gate. <laughs> uh, Glenda Jackson was uh, educated at West Kirby Grammar School for Girls. Her recent biography recounts that she was a diligent student and a good member of Goner House, named after the first chairman of the school governor, Sir Edward Goner, uh, who, to no one's surprise, failed to make it through World War I. <laughs> 
And so it's for the missing word round, the missing word in that sentence being time. A variety of headlines from a variety of papers, including one, two, or less from this week's guest publication, the indispensable Debrett's New Guide to Etiquette and Modern Manners, in particular the chapter on acceptable behaviour on a hunt. <laughs> so, stand by for... The hounds are always known as what? Simon. <laughs> hounds. Is the right answer. <laughs> you mustn't yes. call them dogs, is that right? That's right. What are the, the tails? Stearns. And what is barking? Mad. Mad. <laughs> it's a small place in Essex. <laughs> uh, no, what is the expression for barking? Um, Dogs are... Speaking. Hounds are... Giving tongue. Giving tongue, that's right. <laughs> I can see why you don't want to abolish it. <laughs> Next, the bee bosses forgot what? They were paying Desmond Lynham. They forgot. Is the right answer, mm. to stop paying Des Lynham. Yeah, uh, exactly. Des switched sides uh, because ITV have more live football than BBC. And then Cartoon Network have more live football than the BBC. <laughs> uh, next, if you see barbed wire, cry what? After you, your highness. <laughs> <laughs> where wah. Where wah. Where wah, yes. Is the right answer. Uh, although, how do you pronounce where? Where. According to Debrett, you're supposed to pronounce it war. Uh, where the Debrett talks the most frightful of mine, just around spherical hairy objects on yeah. occasion. <laughs> Tommy granites. <laughs> Which uh, peer pressure uh, brings us to the end of this barren session and the final count shows that this week's dodgy stools are Ian and Glenda with 12 while this week's safe seats are Paul and Lord Onslow with 15. So there's our caption competition to fail to forget. Not wearing a suit today, Geoffrey. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone heard of Glenda Jackson? <laughs> and I leave you with news that after promising that next week's budget will deliver the biggest tax cuts of the century, Gordon Brown double checks his figures. <laughs> A harsh critic informs Bono that he's done nothing decent since the Joshua Tree. <laughs> And at the Conservatives' annual swimming race in Hyde Park, old habits die hard as Geoffrey Archer takes an early lead. <laughs> Good night. Since the making of this programme, the Earl of Onslow has been adjudged worthy of remaining in the House of Lords and retains his seat. Mirror, mirror on the wall, are there two rimmers after all? Comedy brought Red Dwarf next and game on in half an hour. <laughs>